welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance. This is day three of three with Alma Kamal. Welcome back. Thank you. Yay. We're finishing out the week very strong with the finishing of this cat zine that Alma's been working on all week. Yes. So like, I've been thinking of cat puns like after work. I'm just like, ooh, that would be good. I should bring this to the stream. Um, so if you haven't been hanging out with us for the last couple of days, we've had different challenges for you to be working alongside the designers. But today we're challenging you to submit your portfolio to be reviewed by Alma at the end of the stream. So you have about an hour and a half to get that submitted. And then we'll look at, I think, two viewer portfolios. And we'll also be doing a giveaway in about 30 minutes. We're gonna be giving away some Photoshop socks, some chat and win swag. So uh, before we jump into the actual project, why don't you introduce yourself for people who might not know. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alma. Uh, I'm a graphic designer of passion in editorial design, which is what we're doing today, um, finalizing a zine about cats. Yes. I don't That's it. I think of anything yeah. else. <laughs> MFA. MFA uh, yeah. graduate from Academy of Art University. Mm -hmm. I'm currently doing my fellowship at Chronicle Books. Uh, and I'm excited to be here. Cool, it's good to have you back for three days in a row, day three of three. Um, and if you guys have heard of Chronicle before, you know that that's a really cool publishing house, I mm -hmm. guess is what you would call it. Yeah, and it's actually really funny because today we had a meeting in the morning and they were showing a, a book which is still in process, uh -huh. in progress, and it's called Good Boy. Oh. And it's about this like super cute dog who's yeah. like very privileged, but he's like so bored of his like privileged life and right. he just wants to be free. <laughs> so I, I think I'm not usually into illustration book, but this book was like the cutest thing Aww. ever, you know? Cool, I love yeah. that. Good boy, <laughs> good cat. You can twist this a little bit, make it relevant for today. That's awesome. Noelle says, I'm sans socks at the moment. So he needs to win these socks in about 30 minutes. Uh, so you mentioned that we were working on a cat scene. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about where you started what the whole brief was, and then show what you've done so far. Yeah, sure. Um, so I wanted to do a friendly, simple, clean uh, cat zine, which mm -hmm. is a 20-page uh, self-cover. Gotcha. Uh, and I wanted to uh, imitate some of the language from the internet, uh, because the whole point of this uh, zine was about how we're always so um, like obsessed with like cat videos and we spend so many hours and we just like spiral into like this black hole of like cats and dogs <laughs> yes. and <laughs> cute things to help us feel better. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so yeah, and actually I was thinking about this last night. I don't know if you guys noticed like for everybody who's been with us from the beginning mm -hmm. how like the design really shifted. Ah, Have you so? noticed that? To what? From what to what? Like every day I feel like the, the, the character changes mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And so by the end of it, you have a very different product from what you started with. Totally. And I think this is like what graphic design is. You never know what you're going to end up with. Yeah, definitely. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, how like the graphic designer might set something down and then immediately change it. So even if you're new and you feel like you need to keep changing things and tweaking things, that's normal. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about it too much. So we have it here now. The character has changed a couple times. Yeah, so I've left the cover um, free for now. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about some uh, uh, texture illustration for the, let's say, the end sheets, uh. which are not really end sheets since it's a self-cover, so it's like part of the magazine. Mm -hmm. But I wanted something a little bit different for uh, the end sheets. And then it starts with um, a nice article and then cats and paintings, um, just like showing some bits and pieces of information about like the history of cats. Yeah. Uh, what would cats say if they could talk? <laughs> <laughs> Five reasons why cats make us happy. Aww. And then just like a random cute cat pictures, interesting facts about cats. More. <laughs> More. <laughs> yes, the still from the horror movie. And today oh here there's another article mm -hmm. i wanted to add some puns yesterday so we'll be looking at that later today sweet and then um design the cover i guess awesome 
So what was that thing at the bottom, the brief history? Is that this the one? end of it? Yeah, so um, this is actually a very interesting thing. Mm. Uh, in the history of books, there has been instances where uh, the content starts on the cover, yeah. which I think is really interesting, especially for people who have like very short attention span. It's like, I, I want to know right away what mm -hmm. I'm reading. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, so you can either start with the content or with the table of contents on the cover. Um, and that could be um, a really interesting start. Mm. Um, so I opted for uh, the history to be on the back cover. Cool. Um, and yeah, that's it. Nice. I love when books actually have stuff on the back cover specifically. It's like a little insight into what's inside and I had no idea that sometimes in history like the the cover would also have the start of the copy on it yeah wow I mean if you dig in you find lots of interesting stuff mm -hmm. cool it's a little historical note there love that and Jeanette said or Janet says good morning Janet I'm wondering where you are saying good morning from it's currently 3 p.m. here the morning seems like years ago yeah, I know. at this point. <laughs> uh, so as always, chat, let us know where you're watching from, especially Eric Sue. If you're here, let us know where you're watching from because he's been watching for the past three days and he's like, I'm sick of saying where I'm from. <laughs> I'm sick of saying like if it's my first time watching. Oh, she's in Australia. Oh, cool. Cool, Janet. Glad to have you. What's up, Andre? Hello, hello. And let us know if you've tuned in for Alma's streams the last couple days or if you are new here. Awesome. Yeah, so um, yesterday I received a few. Um, oh, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we asked you all to send emails to Alma <laughs> with pictures of cats. I'm very grateful. None of them were weird. Oh, good. I'm so proud of you, chat. So this is one. <laughs> Lil Bob. Aww. This is another one. That's a good cat. That looks like someone's cat. Is yeah. that one of your cats? <laughs> Voodoo Val says, I see mine. Yes. <laughs> and Hi, Christine. <laughs> and um, this and this. Oh. And this were actually really cool uh, pictures. I so. love that. I know, right? This can be the cover picture. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because it's even symbolic, like a porthole into the zine. Yeah. And look, look at how sad this cat is. It's like, why did you put me in there? I am in a pill. You're carrying me around in a capsule. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Val's ears was the little bub one. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So, so yeah, cats. thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for sending the good emails. Uh, Fazwan says it's their first time joining Adobe Live. Welcome. Uh, Fazwan, 7.30 in Adelaide. Oh, cool. Gotcha. 1.30 midnight from Greece. Dimitra, thanks for hanging out with us so late. Appreciate it. Oh. So I'm going to steal some pawns from the internet. A true artist. <laughs> <laughs> true artist steal. So you found uh, an article on Hello Giggles. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? These good? Bad? Uh, I need something a little bit shorter. Okay. Oh, these are like jokes. I like that. The other one was just kind of vocab. Yeah. I don't know if these are gonna work. I, f I saved the ones that chat was talking about yesterday, but it was mostly just like words, mm -hmm. like catastrophe, catalog. Someone said, this zine is so good, it should be in a museum. <laughs> I think uh, Esther might have said that. Esther, was that you, if you're here? How do you even like? <laughs> yep. This? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just, I think, E before ye. No, you're right. Muse okay. Museum? How do we spell museum? <laughs> I mean, it's not even a real word. That's so. true. <laughs> it's a new word. Uh, someone said, what are these puns for again? I must pause to think. Purrs. I've got a good feline about this scene. <laughs> what are these puns for again? <laughs> I must pause to what? Pause to think. You can put a nice inquisitive cat <laughs> in there. How do we spell museum wrong? <laughs> 
Okay, so it is S E U M. I thought so. Museum. Oh, okay. <laughs> Museum. Museum. <laughs> We're just going all out today. Um, we got Are You Kidding Me Right Now? I've got a good feline about this zine. <laughs> Oh yeah. I can't think of any puns. You're all impressive, chat. Cheers to you. Cheers to my fancy water to you. Little known fact, Alma almost choked and died right before the stream. <laughs> right before we went live, there was an oh emergency situation. Why did you die? <laughs> I could be lying. I'm known to be a liar. Shifty. A super shifty cat. <laughs> oh, a little high five. Has a cat ever given you a high five? Nope. It's magical. Or has a cat ever come up to you and just put its paw like on your face? Just like... No, but I've had a, best. a puppy put his uh, tongue on my chin. It just stayed there? Yeah, and it was like... <laughs> So tiny, it was <laughs> the cutest thing ever. <laughs> Little. Oh my gosh. Anybody else have any super cute animal, baby animal stories? A baby raccoon had an accident on me one time. I was holding a baby raccoon. I should have known it's a wild animal. <laughs> oh my god, what, what kind of <laughs> accident? Hmm. Nope. The bad kinds. <laughs> Embarrassing for him. Shoot. Yeah. Val says, I have a scar on my face from a cat high five gone wrong. Does that count? Totally. Your scar has a good story. <laughs> oh, Erica Little. What's up, E? Thanks for hanging out. Jeanette says, I have a scar only nose. Your nose is just covered in cat scars. <laughs> Cool, so you put numbers next to it, just kind of to, um, yeah, like, had some info. We've got five puns over here. Mm -hmm. A whole five puns. Oh my gosh, my mom's back, dropping the cat puns in chat. Meow, are you all doing? She also said one yesterday, <laughs> climb every mountain. Climb every we mountain. Have to add that one. Drink all the milk. I don't know how the rest of the song goes. Uh, Alexandra, is this your go-to grid, the seven columns? Uh, not at all. Yeah, you started with five, and then you went to seven. Yeah, I'm actually lately leaning more towards no grid at all, just Whoa. like margins. Yeah. And just like, pew, randomly <laughs> put This is the designer <laughs> action. <laughs> Similar to a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I, I noticed that I work better when I'm not like being nitpicky. Uh -huh. So I come up with more creative solutions. Right. Don't you mean kit picky? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> I just gotta go with it. <laughs> cool. And I feel like that's something that would might be tough for someone who doesn't know type design super well because then they might just be all over the place and maybe need some more constraint. Yeah, I mean, you definitely need to um, practice a lot with typography uh, till you become like very comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, and sadly, like I see this uh, in a lot of places, like a lot of designers don't care about typography at all. And it's what? just like... That's the thing though. I know, and it's <laughs> like, no, you can't just like do the look and then not care about the details, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I feel like that's where the look comes from. You have to build it. Exactly. Like, oh, I'm offended. <laughs> I'm not even a graphic designer and I am offended. Alexandra says, I get it. I like to design outside the lines. Another design rebel over here. Alexandra. Cool, so now we have seven. We had five. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> Kerwin, yeah, we're doing puns. Give us your best feline pun. I thought there might have been a pun in that sentence, but I don't think there was. Yeah, because 
we already have a feline thingy over here. That's true. True, true. To do that. Ooh, Erica, that's a good question. She's wondering, should I be working with my hidden characters turned on or off? I usually always work with them on. Ah. And uh, for those of you who don't know what she's talking about, she means these things over here, the blue things. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to work with them because so many times we do like double spacing or like, for example, I have oh. a double space over here. Okay. I don't notice, you know? Yeah, so this is really like the nitty gritty detail. Yeah. Cool. And when, did, when do you learn about this kind of thing? These hidden characters? I think I learned about that at work. Oh, so not at school? Nope. <laughs> um, so if you want to show or hide these characters, it's option command I. Right. Good question. Yeah, thanks, Erica. Appreciate ya. Ooh, Kerwin, that's a good joke. Says, I took my girlfriend to a cat show, but she was allergic, so I had to whisk her away. Just whisk her right away. <laughs> Do you ever wish you had, like, cat whiskers? Or, like, no. a cat tail or cat ears? Nope. Never once. No. No. <laughs> it's I can't be alone here, I try to remove them every couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. You're like, I don't need cat whiskers. <laughs> I'd like to have ears or a cat. Uh, or, I mean, a tail. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Val says, I think it would itch my face. Maybe. Or maybe it would make you really good at balancing. <laughs> Are you aware of this website? I am, but maybe chat isn't. Okay, so it's called The Noun Project, and it has um, icons of, like, everything on the planet. That's crazy. And it's really, really um, useful. Mm -hmm. So I was actually looking at it yesterday, and I came across some, like, scroll bars that I thought, oh, we can maybe take some of these and, like, put them into our... Yes! Like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think this is one of the ones... Was it this one that someone mentioned mm -hmm. last time? Yeah, that, like, kind of old, old school Netscape. Yeah browser scroller. Oh, I love this. So you just click and drag or do you download it? It looks like I can't. Um, I'm just going to take a screenshot and then uh -huh. redesign it myself. I love that. Build it from the ground up. <laughs> Started from the bottom now. Yeah. Now we're... Oh, I feel like there's a cat pun in there too. So now we're mere... No, mm, no I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying too hard. Erica says, I didn't learn about special characters in school either. Come on, schools. I know, right? What are we doing? We've talked about this, how you felt like you learned a lot of what you know once you finally started working. Mm -hmm. uh, chat, what do you think? Do you agree? Did you need to actually kind of go into an industry first before you started learning the stuff you needed to know? I'm going to guess the answer is yes. Amna says, hi, Alma. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not a good response. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we don't start with the pranking. <gasps> oh, do we have a troll? <laughs> a cat troll? <laughs> <laughs> quit, quit kitting around, Amna. <laughs> we're a pretty, we're a pretty nice bunch here. We're just doing puns. No pranks. Ah, what happened? Oh, yeah. Oh, see you later, Alexander. Thanks for hanging out. Enjoyed having you around today, this week. Does anybody have any typography questions? Ooh. I don't know if they have questions, but Noel says, Amna, tell us all of Alma's secrets. Uh-oh, gonna get exposed. <laughs> she doesn't know any of them. No, mm. or maybe. <laughs> uh, but seriously, chat, if you have design-related questions, this is the last stream of the entire week. We're finishing up at 5 p.m. Pacific time today, so you have about an hour, over an hour, to get your questions in. And we'll do our best. Yeah, and um, if you guys want to know about uh, paragraph styles or character styles, I, I think some people usually like are always confused with these. So. Yeah. If you want me to um, show you how it's done, then yeah, I would love to. Cool. Yeah, let us know, chat, if there's anything in design related, because I feel like 
A lot of people who might be in the creative space, they might like to design things or draw, they might be kind of scared of InDesign. It seems very technical. Yeah, but um, honestly, like the more time you spend with it, the more you realize that it's actually a very easy and straightforward program, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you know the rules. So I guess just give it some time. Yeah, definitely. And if you do have experience in Illustrator or Photoshop, for example, a lot of the uh, commands are similar. You can kind of translate it from there. Uh, Faswan wants to know, do you have any advice on the number of fonts that you use in a project or font weights? Um, it depends on the project, uh, but I would say I don't usually go over two typefaces a project. And but, but again, it depends on the project. If it's mm -hmm. like a something that's very wide, it has so many different components. Yeah. Um, it has to have like a certain character. Then maybe uh, three typefaces, uh, but not not more than that. I know people who would use like four or five. Yeah. But personally, I don't. Cool. And um, even with the weights, I don't use a lot of weights. Uh, but I love. Actually, yeah, I don't. I don't usually use a lot of weights mm -hmm. unless it's like a very wide thing, and I would like to make distinctions. Like it depends on how many levels of information there is. Mm -hmm. um, if you were always showing the same kind of information, then there's no need to um, give a different design. Yeah. I agree. And so what is your reasoning behind just having two? Just because you need one to mean one thing and one to have another? It just keeps it simple? Uh, yeah, so maybe something for display for like titles and yeah. then something for body copy. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes some typefaces work better for captions because it's going to be like oh. a very small uh, point size. Mm -hmm. um, others work better as uh, bigger. Uh, but me as a designer, like I'm, I'm very uh, minimalistic. Yeah. So I only use what I have to. Gotcha. So just like sharing the information that you need to share in the simplest way. Mm -hmm. uh, Cedric says, I love to use two totally different typefaces, one for titles and branding style, and the other for body text. Oh, exactly what Alma said. <laughs> nice. What's up, Cedric? Glad to have you here. Another one of our mod squad hanging out. I like how you're building this. A little illustration, a little graphic design in there. Yeah, keep keep things interesting. Mm -hmm. I like the red too. I know, right? It's nice. It's really strong. That's why I was like, I'm just sticking to these two colors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the classic little hash mark. Uh, Janet wants to know, when you work on large documents, like over 200 pages with perfect binding, what do you recommend for an inside margin? Um, I think printers require a 0.75 of an inch, mm -hmm. which is three quarters of an inch. Um, but you can you can go b much bigger. Yeah. I mean, it all depends on the design as well. Yeah. So maybe at least that, but potentially bigger. Yeah. Uh, Jana, are you working on something similar? I'd love to know what you are working on. Ashi wants to know, can you have different fonts for each heading and keep the body text the same? Um, you can do that. I mean, honestly, at the end of the day, if you know the rules, then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You can always break them. Uh, and again, it depends on the project, but unless you really have to because of the content, like if, if you have some sort of concept that backs up your decisions, then I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like it would be more of just a stylistic choice at that point. Eduardo, thanks for being here. Studying news, communication, and magazines. Sweet. And I'm interested for other people in chat if you're also working on editorial design or maybe you're a UI UX designer and still laying out information. Let me know. I think people are usually um, afraid of consistency and they're afraid of uh, their design like feeling a little static and that's why they try to put like as much as possible in. Mm -hmm. But honestly, if like just keep it simple, you know, it does not need so many elements. Gotcha. Yeah, you kind of have to trust, 
trust the process, as they say. What do you think? I like this scroll bar a lot. And were you gonna use it as like the progress bar? Uh, no, this is like a different one. Just for a uh, graphic thing. But yeah, yeah, it's cool. I like it. I think it definitely helps to bring in that internet feel to this spread specifically. <laughs> Eric says, everyone knows what I do by now. Eric, do I know what you do? I don't know if I know. Maybe I've missed it. I know. So please, remind us. I'm very happy with this page, I think. You say you're not very happy? Yeah, I think I'm Ooh. all. Bye. Bye, girls. <laughs> Oh yeah, we have all these awesome pictures that people sent. Maybe we can start with those. Nice little banner. Cat banner. Mm -hmm. Oh, Don't look at me like that. <laughs> oh, a little double. Sometimes your petition is very attractive. I agree. I don't know if it works in this... Do you think it works in this, like, particular case because I think the image has to be like very compelling mm. I feel like this is compelling though like imagine if this was a human like staring right in the camera and laying down mm. that would be compelling but it's a cat true that <laughs> I feel like it needs to be like black and white or something like oh. very moody let's try <laughs> Woo! so how are you gonna do that so we click uh, right click on the image mm -hmm. um, edit with and depending on what the image is, you can either go to Illustrator or Photoshop. In this case, I'll go to Photoshop. And I know this little um, shortcut, which I think it's Option Command U. No, was it Shift Command U? Yeah, it desaturates the wow. picture. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should also give it some, why is this appearing downstairs? <laughs> All the way downstairs. I know. <laughs> uh, we can give it some brightness and contrast to make it even more compelling. Mm -hmm. um, we can also go to image adjustments and selective color and make the black. Is it working? Oh, the, the, the preview's on. Yeah. It's supposed to make the black um, stronger. I don't know, maybe because I desaturated it so it doesn't work. Let's see. Oh, yeah, because there's no color information. Oh, no, it works. Oh, nice. But you can only choose the blacks. Oh, uh, no, you can do anything. Oh. Yeah, all the colors. Let's all see. the colors in the wind. Mm -hmm. Maybe give it some green. Yes. Make it look like it was shot on a 35 millimeter film cam. Let's see. Noise. Add noise. Okay, so you're going to add grain. Or should we add dust and scratches? I don't know. Let's try them both. Do a little experimentation. Whoa. What? <laughs> this is not what I was going for. Look at that little. Oh, I like the nose. It looks like it was drawn on. Like a pen. Whose cat is this? Whose cat is this? And what is it doing with its hands? Just... <laughs> Andre says, zines are a great way to experiment. Seriously, that's like the whole name of the game. And save it as Photoshop or TIFF. That's another thing, uh, file formats, mm -hmm. they're so different. Um, the yeah. highest quality files are Photoshop and TIFF. Um, JPEG is like super uh, uh, condensed, I would say, mm -hmm. is that the word? Or compressed? Compressed, yeah, compressed quality, so mm -hmm. it does not retain uh, the quality, so I suggest always working with uh, high quality files, especially if you're printing. Exactly, yeah, if it's gonna exist anywhere but the internet, Probably a good idea to think about that. And so, Command D to place. And I 
choose the black one. I choose you, black and white kitty. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, I'm um, still not happy with this page. Ooh, well before we jump in, there's something exciting happening behind us. Okay. Wow, celebration time. So it is chat and win time, 30 minutes into the segment. We have this beautiful pair of Photoshop socks. Limited edition, these are rare. So whoever wins, you're lucky. Uh, so we're gonna play a short video, but first we're gonna ask you a question and all you have to do to enter to the, win the chat and win is answer it in chat. What should we ask? What's your favorite um, job, I would say? Job? Yeah. Cool. What's your favorite job? Let us know in chat. We'll be back in a moment. Eduardo says TV host. That's his favorite job. This is similar to being a TV host. Mm. We are hosting on a small TV. That is your computer. Ashi says designer, UI designer, something that feeds the family. <laughs> nice no. Uh, designer again, Pokemon gym leader. Which gym? Kerwin. <laughs> Motion graphic designer. Washing. A <laughs> washing job? <laughs> washing what? <laughs> yeah, what are you washing? <laughs> Cleaning? Okay, Agnes likes to clean. It's a good job. <gasps> we have a winner! Eduardo Mendes! Congratulations, Eduardo! Thank you so much for hanging out. Eduardo, were you the one who said the TV host? Oh my goodness! Either way, congratulations, you've won. Some Photoshop sucks. Here you go. One day I'm actually gonna throw it. And Paco will be very mad at me. <laughs> So in the, your Behance messages, Eduardo, make sure to peek at those soon because we'll be sending you information that way. He says, yes. So excited. So you said you're not happy with this spread. Yeah. Tell me more. I think it has so much going on and probably the white space is not very well thought of okay and white space is like what balances the the whole composition so it's really important mm -hmm. i don't know maybe if i do this hmm it's somehow better isn't it yeah i yeah. agree i see sometimes like a just <laughs> little <laughs> boop <laughs> and that does it Cool. While you're fixing that, we have a question from Erica. Uh, she's wondering, do you have a perspective on the current trend of not just breaking type rules, but purposefully defying them? Like she sees people stretching type, rivers and paragraphs, making bizarre font pairings, etc. What do you think? I think that like all depends on the content. Okay. Like again, content is, is very important. You know, if, if, if this was the purpose of like for example, if you were doing an experimental zine, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you do all these things, or you're, like remember Emigre? It was like an amazing uh, graphic design magazine that broke like every rule possible yeah. back then. And back then they didn't have uh, InDesign or Photoshop or any of these things, so they did it all manually. Right. And um, by breaking some of the rules, you get to to somewhere that was not like, I guess, invented before. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're cool with it, mm -hmm. if it fits the content. Yeah, Erica, what do you think? Because I know you're also a type aficionado. I'd like to hear your perspective. Kerwin says, maybe you should bleed your left-hand page into the right-hand page. That would get rid of some of the negative space. But I think Alma wanted to keep yeah. some of the negative space. I think I wanted more negative space. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, that's cool. I guess I'll keep it. <laughs> nice. Nice, Kerwin. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Everyone say hello to my mom in the chat. I know you already did, but say it again, because she's saying hello <laughs> again. <laughs> Aww. Uppercase. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I just want to see if I... I don't usually like to do that, but... Huh. If I do... Wait, what happened? Oh, I see. The frame. <laughs> <laughs> Did I end up locking both of them? Okay, I just wanted to lock this one and then... Yeah. Okay. Then why is so big? Nice. Nice hierarchy. <laughs> Erica says she is a type enthusiast, maybe. Maybe not an aficionado, but ty pi <laughs> typography is still hard. Agreed. Speaking is also hard for me at this point. <laughs> Oh no, do you remember yesterday when Jason was telling us about his 20 pound Siamese cat? Yeah. And we were making fun of him mercilessly. <laughs> Don't tell me it died. No, but Jason says, by the way, I had to go home last night and had to explain to my cat how he got fat shamed <laughs> online. <laughs> how did he take it, Jason? <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, if it makes you feel any better, I said nothing. Yep. It was all me. Blame it on the host. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> Help you forgive me. The cat is perfect the way he is. True. Too late. Although he is, know. yeah. <laughs> just I'm worried about him. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, there sure. we go. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I'm gonna try to do some uh, text trap here. What does this mean? Oh, text trap. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, so text trap is if you want uh, to put a shape or uh, or like like a bigger text or another kind of text within a text, mm -hmm. and you want the text to go around that shape, uh, that's called text trap. Gotcha. You're wrapping the text around mm -hmm. it. So I'm creating a box which you can't see, and I'm gonna give it. Nice. It's also in the top toolbar. Where is it? Boop. Oh. At least just a couple options oh, for yeah. it. True that. So I'm gonna give it this. Oh, cool. So you just with the click of a button, it's wrapped. Mm-hmm. But now it's wrapping around this this one too, which I did not want. So maybe we get rid of this box and we put it here. Ooh, that's interesting. That's kind of internet-y, isn't it? Yeah, totally. Like, looks like a, a window that has layered on top of another window. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think, chat? You likey? I likey. Whoa. I'm kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> really breaking the rules. Do you ever just, like, do crazy design stuff just to make yourself laugh? Yeah. <laughs> just break it. <laughs> That's why I love drawing so much, because you can draw crazy stuff. It's just hilarious. Drawing is amazing. <laughs> but I feel like it's it's a skill that I don't have. No? Do you have interest in it? Like doing it? No, because I don't have the skill. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just like, meh, not my thing. <laughs> if I had the skill, I would probably like it. Yeah. I would make it a thing. That makes sense. Anyone can know and learn how to draw. Just know that but it probably will take a long time. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great, Adobe Live. We're wondering if you can make a Behance project of the zine when you're done. Yeah, sure. Yay! So we can also see the finished beautiful project. I want to try the text shop over here as well, mm -hmm. just to see. Cool. That crazy text wrap. And chat, if you were not with us when we first started out today, we do have portfolio reviews in about 50 minutes. So it's a little bit different from the other two days that we've been streaming. We had challenges on Tuesday and Wednesday, and today we're asking you to submit your portfolio, your Behance link to us, and we'll pick two viewers to review for the last, I don't know, 30-ish minutes of the stream. Um, Alma will give some good feedback, some good critiquing, let you know how you can sharpen things up a little bit. 
So if you'd like to participate and you have an editorial design or graphic design related portfolio, send it over. We're excited to see. And this is your last chance because this is the last stream of Editorial Design Week, although we will have some XD streaming tomorrow with Talon. Um, I think I want to do something different with this spread because I'm oh. I wasn't happy with it. Okay. Again. <laughs> <laughs> it's always changing. Why not? You're, you're not oh. married to this, um, to any of this, so. No, but I want to be <laughs> married to those cats. <laughs> I love that little background guy. I'm pretty sure you can be in some places around the oh? world. Oh? In your country, can you marry a cat? Let us know in the chat. <laughs> uh, Erica, that's a good point. You could use the InDesign Publish Online tool and get this project online. Lickety split. Super easy. What's up, Victor? Thanks for hanging out. And Madeline, thanks for hanging out too. I don't see any cats in that photo. Oh, it's because it's giving them <laughs> attitude in the background. Oh. Do you see it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stretching. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh, how dare you know, touch my humans. Too. Yep. <laughs> They're so sassy. Anybody have any sassy cat stories? Do you have a sassy cat? Spill the tea on your cat. <laughs> I like that guy. This guy? Yeah, it just looks like a young, a young spunky friend. How do you know it's a guy? I don't know. I don't. I like that friend. I like that cat. <laughs> I like them. I like them. Mm -hmm. I love this this one. This one is like... <laughs> it looks like a grandparent <laughs> waiting. I feel like this is my future, this oh cat. Oh my gosh. It's glaring out the window at all times. <laughs> it's like all fat and grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> but fulfilled. <laughs> Yeah, it does look fulfilled. Mm hmm Like I earned chocolate. Yep, fulfilled with chocolate. Well maybe not chocolate. I don't know if that's good for cats. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So this cat looks like it's looking down on these people. Yeah. True. And that's always something to um, also like consider when you're <laughs> <laughs> pictures out, like try to make them interact with each other. Totally. Yeah, or break the interaction if that's the goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Erica says, it me, that cat. <laughs> uh, that cat is me, one of them. Which Eric, one is it this one? I don't know. One? What do you think? Maybe neither. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a cat in a fishbowl. I don't think that's a good feeling though. Is no. It? Maybe not. I said sometimes. Sometimes I feel a bad feeling. <laughs> this is turning into a therapy session. Yep. Cat zine therapy session. Oh. Oh. That's me for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, but can you talk a little bit more about your thoughts on if grad school was worth it for you, or if it, who it might be worth it for? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I feel like grad school was worth it for me because I didn't have an, a great uh, education back in undergrad. Mm -hmm. I don't think after after graduating, I actually understood what graphic design was or, or what typography was. Uh, when I look back at my old uh, projects, I feel like they were so juvenile yeah. in comparison to what I do now. Um, so I definitely grew so much as a designer. Um, I also grew as a person mm -hmm. uh, because grad school uh, breaks you. Do tell. Tell me more. It causes a lot of like depression, anxiety, um, self-doubt. Um, and for a lot of people, it causes them to like change their shift majors, like maybe uh, midway. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that that could be a good thing because um, at some point you realize, ah, 
screw that, that's not for me, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I learned a lot. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And um, also with grad school, I learned a lot about other designers, like professional designers, um, history of graphic design, uh, like graphic designers in the workplace. Uh, I know that uh, in under undergrad they teach history as well, but it mm. wasn't it, it wasn't as deep yeah. as it was in grad grad mm -hmm. school. Okay. So yeah. Cool. So if you really want to dive in to design as a career, maybe it would be good for you. And I want to hear from you, chat as well. What do you think? Do we have any other uh, grad school people who studied design or fine arts or anything like that? How do you feel like it went for you? I might be interested in it someday. I'm not sure. We'll see. I think it's a good buffer zone between like adult life and free adult life, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's true. Like, if you get to a point where, oh my god, I don't know what to do now, I'm not yeah. ready mm -hmm. to have a full-time job, then it's cool, yeah. Yeah, keep learning. I feel like I'm already in adult life. Is it too late for me? Never. <laughs> High five, cat. Ooh, I like this. This is a new design decision. There's a lot of new decisions today, did you notice? <laughs> I did, but I like it. Things are changing quickly. <laughs> we got rid of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I locked it, so I'm gonna unlock it. Bye-bye. And... Bye-bye. <laughs> what did I put there? I forget. Oh, the oh, yeah. very seductive cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna copy this one. Uh -huh. Paste in place and change the picture. Okay. Bub! Should we go with this one? I think we should try it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> the little tongue! And then, oh my gosh. Right click, edit with Photoshop. Okay. Shift Command U, or you can just go to Image, Mode, Grayscale at the Grace top. Mm -hmm. Discard. Oh, I see this over here. I want to crop oh. it. So C for crop, and then you just crop it, and then enter. And play around with the brightness, contrast. Mm -hmm. Give it the same treatment we gave um, that other picture. Right. And this is one thing to always think about if you're going from digital to print is that like a computer screen emits light, so things are gonna look brighter. And then when you print it, it's flat, it's actually like absorbing light, so it's always gonna be a little bit darker if you don't have an awesome printer. Add that grain in there. Yes. I wonder who this man is. The owner, the friend, the best friend. <laughs> it's getting complicated. It is. <laughs> it's complicated with bubs. David says, I think one of the benefits of grad school is the chance to deep dive into how other people have solved design challenges over time. Very true. Yeah, that's all design is, is solving problems. And since we're working with color in InDesign right now, uh, what do you do? You think there are any tips for working with color in InDesign? Uh, Erica feels like sometimes it's hard or inconvenient compared to Illustrator in Photoshop. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like, is there a specific problem that you come across when you when you do that? Yeah, that's a good point. Like maybe adding effects or making photos like multiply or making them not as uh, opaque. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, there are uh, certain effects that work better in other programs than. So, for example, uh, if I were to do uh, a gradient on an InDesign, that would print really badly because it would mm. be very like cut off. Yeah. 
so that's why maybe do it in Illustrator and then um, export it as a TIFF file, which turns it into like a Photoshop a pixelated uh, mm -hmm. file so that it's uh, much smoother. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these are things to think about. Definitely. David says, in general, it's best to create color swatches, which is similar to making global colors in Illustrator. Nice. Thanks, David, for sharing that. Um, I think one beautiful thing is how well all of the design apps and creative apps work together. So sending things to Illustrator or Photoshop, editing the colors, saving it, it'll update in InDesign. They speak pretty well. Yeah. And um, there's also a thing called uh, CC libraries. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with this. I'm a little familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm familiar. <laughs> so this is very cool because you can literally put drag anything into it. Yeah. Don't make me sound like a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you can. Yeah. I mean, you have I to don't like know, choose maybe. a specific. I guess. Yeah. But yeah. then you can. Can you do it here? That's weird. Are you connected to the internet? I am. So usually mm. what I do is I do some icons and illustrations on Illustrator and then I drag it into the library. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have it. Like for all my other programs, I come into InDesign and I just look at it and I drag it into InDesign. Yeah. So it's very, um, it's very useful. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be like shapes. It can be color palettes. It can be brushes. It can, I think it can be text styles or just fonts. You can also collaborate with other people, so you can share the same library, add your things, they'll open it up in Photoshop on their end, add more things. It's pretty awesome. And that comes with uh, Creative Cloud. Yeah, and um, if you guys don't know how to um, add swatches to your uh, swatch panel, mm -hmm. then maybe that's like worth talking about. Totally, let's do it. Um, so click. over here, a uh, new color swatch, and then you pick whether you want it to be process or spot. So process is CMYK, uh, spot color, uh, I think we mentioned this yesterday, which is um, Pantone colors. Um, so if you click on spot, and then you can pick, there are so many different uh, libraries, um, and all of these, all the Pantones come with their own, like, um, palette uh, book that you can just like go through it and look at exactly how the color is going to print mm -hmm. um, and for example you can use a uh, Pantone solid coated and then you have all these different colors and if you want to add any of them you just click on it and you click add and then another one click and click add and then let's let's do it for example you add it Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're done, you, you can add a few ones uh, in a row, and then you just click done. Mm -hmm. And now it's in your um, swatches library. Woohoo! And it when worked. you're done with it, you can just grab it and delete it. Yeah, so you don't confuse yourself, mm -hmm. no clutter. Awesome. That's so cool that the Pantone basically books exist within the apps. Yeah. You can have a book in your hand to be comparing and then find it there. There's also the Pantone website where you can find exact codes, things and, like that. And I think sometimes uh, your computer might not have all the Pantone colors because mm -hmm. they change, I think, every year. I'm yeah. not sure. Um, so if you're missing any of them, you can just download it from the internet. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So cool. I love the integration. Uh, and um, before you send your uh, file to print, just to make sure that you haven't used a color that's outside of your uh, palette by mistake, then you can go mm -hmm. here again to the option uh, panel and then click select all unused colors mm -hmm. and you can just drag. Gotcha. Maybe. So why would you want to do that? Would that be for the printer's sake? Yeah. Because you don't want to confuse the printer mm -hmm. um, by leaving things on the side of the page, leaving extra colors here. Mm -hmm. um, you want to be very transparent. Definitely. Keep things simple. There's always a, a whole kind of workflow when you're setting up a file for production. Like how do you need to set it up so that your manufacturer or printer or what have you will know exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
there is usually like in those files there will be a lot of layers that are non printable layers mm -hmm. so it's just for the printer you know to to show where the die line is or the like die cut or where the spot color goes right so interesting and you said that at your one of your jobs you were talking with the printer yeah so you had to maybe help them through some of those issues yeah I mean in the beginning they had to help me because mm -hmm. I was I didn't know anything about it but then yeah uh, we would talk about uh, wanting, for example, a booklet uh, between these uh, specific pages and then how is that possible mm -hmm. or if we shift it somewhere else. Because that's also something to think about. You can't put uh, a booklet anywhere within the book. It has to be uh, between signatures. Okay, yeah. Um, so signatures are collated um, spreads. Uh, if you look at any of your um, big uh, books, like the on the spine or mm -hmm. on the side of the spine, you can see that it's like um, like it's like a bunch groups, of little books. Yeah, groups of papers are collated mm -hmm. together, and each each of those groups is called uh, a signature. Mm -hmm. um, and the number of those signatures is usually divisible by four. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So cool. um, yeah, if you want to put in an insert, it has to be in between. It can't ah. break the... Mm -hmm. So you might have to kind of redesign like what's on the back of one signature and the front of another so that the booklet can be placed there. Yeah, or move the booklet around. Mm -hmm. If it's, for example, like a client booklet, mm -hmm. so it doesn't have to be in a specific place, we can move it like up or down the pagination. Gotcha. That's really interesting. I, I think that's so cool how your books, especially if they're bigger, are actually just like a stack of little books, like a bunch of little booklets glued together or sewn together. It's pretty cool. I always find it very interesting. I think people who are non-designers don't really know what graphic design is. Mm -hmm. They think it's just, uh, it's just like designing a, a like business cards and logos. Yeah. Because uh, I, I met this person once and, and he's like, what do you do? And I was like, you know, I design books. And he's like, oh, like you, you do the covers? I'm like, no, I designed like the whole the book. The actual book. Yeah, and he's <laughs> like, oh, you mean the cover, right? And I'm like, no, the whole book. Yeah. <laughs> and he couldn't understand like, what is there to design in the book? You right. Know? Oh my gosh, I'm sure that's kind of offensive. That's like, what fine. are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So I bet... I'm guessing there are some best practices for designing a book for like best readability and what have you. Oh yeah, definitely. Are there oh. things that someone who isn't a book designer could look at a book and be like, oh, I know why they did that, or I know. Non-designer? Yeah. Little tricks of the trade that might be interesting to know. Oh yeah. Um, so basically, um, typefaces, like mm -hmm. your uh, choice of typeface is very important because uh, you can choose a typeface that you think looks good, but actually it's really, really hard to read. Mm. And uh, you also have to uh, keep in mind that like reading a line of text is so different from reading a continuous text. So for example, this typeface might work for display for, for like a sentence or a couple of words, but it might not work it'll be so hard to read for like the whole book you yeah know? yeah um you have to think about leading which is the lines between the lines of text the spaces between them right uh they shouldn't be too wide that like the the lines start to like break apart from each other but they also shouldn't be too tight that you feel like oh my god like my eyes are hurting mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um you think about tracking which is the spaces between the words uh, same thing, Sh they shouldn't be too much, they shouldn't be too little. Um, I, I don't know if you want me to demonstrate here. Please do. Like, for example, uh, right now the numbers here uh, are really good because the size of the text is 13 and the leading is 18, which um, I mentioned before. It has to be uh, three to four uh, points bigger than the uh, point size. Uh, depending on the typeface. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I go now and make it, I don't know, 30. Whoa. I mean, that is so painful, you know, it's yeah. so hard to read. 
That's confusing immediately. Yeah, and confusing. You'll, you'll never know like where you ended yeah. and where you started. Mm -hmm. Or for example, like this is tracking. So if I track it too much, then uh, like you start to see the spaces in between the words yep. more than seeing the actual words, right. you know? Right. And it might, might not be so obvious here, but in print, you will be able to see it. Um, or for example, if I use, I don't know. Like for example, an extended typeface for mm -hmm. the body copy. Ooh. That'd be so hard to read for a continuous text, yeah. you know? Right. Um, so try to think about um, all these things. Um, and also uh, try not to put a lot of like uh, ornaments or like design elements around the page okay. for continuous text so that it, it's not very um, like distracting or like bothersome. Right. And uh, one thing to like never do is not to put a uh, white text on black background. Okay. Because that's very, very um, like hard on the eyes. Gotcha. So this way that the text loses, loses uh, readability. Right. So there's a difference between legibility and readability. Oh, okay. Uh, legibility is when you literally cannot like read the letters, you can't make them out. Mm -hmm. But readability is like, is this text easy to read? Is it comfortable to read? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so these are all things to think about. Wow, I love knowing this. <laughs> it's like a little secret, secret hints. You could do a whole podcast. About the secrets of book design. <laughs> People in chat are talking about how when they explain like to their parents or grandparents what their job is, they're very confused. Just like how that guy was like, wait, you do the you do the cover? No, I don't do the cover. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, Victor, it's definitely not simple. Non-designers feel like you just type the words for a book in Word. No, no, no. <laughs> so this is actually the back cover, which I'm designing right now. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, I just want it to be um, part of the, the content itself. And it's actually like the beginning of the content because yeah. it's like a brief history of cats, like before we dig into like the other random and fun facts. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it would be interesting to like flip uh, back and then go like, oh, this is the introduction, you know? Yeah. And then you flip on the front and then you continue. Yeah, I like that. Is that something you do when you get a book? Do you automatically flip it over or do you open it? I think I open it mm -hmm. and usually like I'm very disappointed because I notice <laughs> <laughs> all the issues. Yeah, because <laughs> it's very sad. I feel like people spend so much like amount and time and and effort and money on, on the cover. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you open the book, it's oh like <laughs> all of these considerations are like out the window. Yeah? Wow. And it's like, it's like you build something up just to break it down. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you really want to build like a beautiful piece of something, then just have it like all the way through. Yeah, right. Like that author spent so much time too. And you're just turning their words into potatoes, bad potatoes. <laughs> I feel like that as just a designer in general, like I almost can't enjoy things anymore because I just see like how poorly things are designed in everyday life. I'm like, no, <laughs> how could you do this? Oh, but then we remember this cat. I know, <laughs> I love this picture. This cat is all of us. It's the every person. <laughs> I'm gonna need to add some grains for this picture because it's uh, pixelating because it's much smaller than I want it to oh, be. Oh, okay. And that's that's also a trick that Ooh. you can do if you have like uh, pictures that are a little bit smaller and you, you want to go bigger. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't work for like if the picture is like this big and you want it to be that big. Yeah. But it works sometimes. Cool. I'm excited to see this. Love hearing the little tricks. So, yeah. We add some um, another thing that I do sometimes if I am like desperate to use this particular picture and I can't find like a bigger quality over there or I can't buy it anywhere is I print it actual size mm -hmm. um, and then I scan it like very high 
Oh, okay. Um, and mm -hmm. then I add greens and I can change the, yeah. the size. Right, because you don't get the pixels, you just kind of get a lot of graininess. Yeah. That's interesting. The more you know. Chat, do you have any other kind of tricks of the trade in your specific trade? Um, I know a lot of like concept artists use actual photo textures in their work to speed up their painting. Let me know. Tell me more. Ashi says there should be a course for just book designing. You could major in book design. And did you always know you wanted to do books specifically or just editorial in general? I think I knew like at the end of uh, my undergrad mm -hmm. because I, I did a book for my, um, for my thesis. And then I was like, mm, I enjoy this. <laughs> mm, this tastes <laughs> good. <laughs> cool. So yeah. Oh, there's that hidden character. Hashtag. Should we hashtag it? Hashtag copycat. It is the internet. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I like it. Me too. Then you gotta decide where to put the title. And chat, if you are just joining us, we do have about 23 minutes until we're going to be starting our portfolio reviews. If you wanna know more about that, go over here, click the portfolio review tab and find out more. Basically, we're going to pick two of your portfolios to look at, give some feedback, review before the stream is over. And this is the last stream of the week for editorial design. Uh, we've been focusing on building these awesome designs, uh, specifically using the new fonts that you can find from Monotype in Typekit. So there are over 600 new fonts from Monotype. Check them out. Uh, if you have a CC subscription, you are free to use them. And there's a new um, update coming soon to InDesign and Illustrator where over 9,000 new fonts will be available in your apps. So when you open your text tool and you see the drop down of, I don't know, 100 maybe fonts, it'll be 9,000. Crazy. And you can sync it right from there, from Typekit. It's very exciting. Ooh, taking a barcode. Yeah, just to make it a little bit more efficient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, that's another really cool thing. I've noticed people lately started really playing around with the barcode yep. and like making some really interesting and cool stuff with it. Yeah, you really can edit them mm -hmm. quite uh, vastly. Yes, Victor, over 9,000. You heard me right. I wonder what this barcode is actually for. <laughs> I have no idea. Who has a scanner? Somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, nothing is off the table. You can play with anything. Oh, it's like a little pattern. Sweet. Do you think that would actually work? Like if they were to scan that? Or is it more just decoration? You think it would work? I don't yeah. Know. It would just probably just pick up something different maybe <laughs> who knows um <laughs> there actually are typefaces that are like uh, purely ornamental that you can just like like yeah. type whatever and it just like creates right. a barcode for yeah you. oh cool yeah so you can use that for like design purposes mm -hmm. it's like a customized one you don't have to just grab it from google mm -hmm. like every other designer but i think for these purposes it's fine Oh yeah, Val, nice. So she just put a link to the Adobe Live Chrome extension. Who has it in chat? Raise your hand. I have it. It's basically a little extension that will let you know when we're live. Uh, it's just for fun. It's just for your use. Adobe Live has it. Yeah, he does. I use it all the time when I'm not hosting, of course. I think the yellow of this image really goes well with your color palette. Yeah. It's perfect. It's interesting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. 
It's like a happy accident. There are no accidents in this business. Uh-uh. <laughs> Unless you're Bob Ross, then everything's a happy little accident. Who's Bob Ross? He's a, like a painter that used to paint on TV. Okay. And he was very like zen and chill and he had a big afro. And he would always talk about his happy little accidents, his happy little trees. You gotta watch Bob Ross. It's an experience. <laughs> Do you think the zine needs um, a table of contents? Oh. Because we can totally create one. I think why not? I mean, there are a bunch of different contents. Okay, so we will need to um, add four more pages. Alrighty. Because, yep, 28 divided by four is an even number. So 28. And we can take one of those and just put it as a, for the contents and we, t we take another one and add some more images to it. Perfect. I like that, some gratuitous cat photos. I'm excited to see how you tackle a table of contents. Now I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure for me. I'll be impressed by anything. <laughs> yeah, Victor, Bob Ross is super relaxing. It's a great way to wind down after work. Kevin, you use the extension? Yay! Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, a lot of people don't know what kind of like pages go and, and what's the order that goes in a, in a book. Yeah, tell us. So there's a few pages um, before the actual content in the book and a few pages after the content and before it's called uh, front matter of the book okay and after it's called the back matter okay and the front one is like uh, for example it's called a title page where you just uh, repeat the title with the author from the cover um, you have the uh, uh, copyright information um, the maybe forward or in introduction which of course is not part of the actual content mm -hmm. Uh, maybe you have a dedication uh, page and you have the contents page and you ac you don't actually start um, paging or like paginating the book until after these pages. Okay. So in that section, uh, you can paginate them as, I don't know, A, B, C, D or like the num numeral mm -hmm. numbers. Yeah. Um, and uh, the pages, you start numbering them from uh, chapter one or, or whatever, and they start on the right uh, right side of the book. Huh. Um, yeah. And then you stop counting again once you get to the uh, back matter. And the back matter could be index, notes. Uh, you might uh, decide to uh, repeat the title page as well. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Cool. I don't think I've ever seen like a table of contents or a dedication or forward that has like a Roman numeral or an ABC. I feel like it's always blank uh, in my memory. Yeah, I mean it's it's up to to the designer. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, you can add it or it can just be how you design your um, uh, yeah pages mm -hmm. so that it doesn't end up um, screwing up the page count of the actual content mm -hmm. if you want to like add or or edit. Gotcha. So how often do you have to show the actual author what you're designing? Do they have to sign off on it? I think it depends on what kind of um, agreement I would say you have with the okay. author. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you do have to show them the design. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> 9,000 what? Sorry. <laughs> I feel like as an author, it's it would be scary if you really hated your the design of your book but it would be awesome if you really loved it. Totally. What is that tiny box? It says contents. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> uh, just really playing with the size here. <laughs> tiny, tiny. Let's see how many um, parts do you have? One, two, three, four, seven, 
Any information? Okay, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see. I love this. Each one should get bigger. Oh, or maybe seven. <laughs> And oh god. Until it's just like unreadable. <laughs> We're not gonna have the space for that. Illegible. But yeah, um, contents, uh, a, a, a table of contents is like a, a page for you to like play around with. Awesome. Um, when I was hosting Marta earlier, her table of contents was like a timeline. And then I had a page number oh, for each cool. little piece. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Victor wants to know, when numbering your pages, do you ever start with two on the right side? Or is it always on the uh, back? No, uh, two is is for the left, the, uh -huh. the even numbers, I guess they're called. Mm -hmm. They're on the left uh, side of the page. Always? Yeah, so you start with the right side. Gotcha. These little rules, it's so interesting to know. Oh, oh Kevin, that's good, Catman and Robin. Good pun. We had, a, let's see, we had a name yesterday. Al Meow and Kathleen. That was us. Your cat hosts. <laughs> and chat, I see a lot of awesome submissions for the portfolio review. Please keep getting those sent in. You have 13 minutes left before we will start reviewing. I'm always so inspired by all of you. Your work is cool. Nice. And chat, I wanna know who's gonna be here next week for XD week. I know I asked this earlier. But if you weren't around, we will be having Adobe Live next week. The theme will just be different, like it is every week. So we will be having XD Experience Design. Bye, Erica. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Yeah, so we have an, a bunch of awesome designers and hosts, and we also have people from the actual XD team here at Adobe are coming to hang out. We'll have Talon kicking it off actually tomorrow with, I believe, like getting started in XD stream. You can check out the schedule tab above us and over here for more info. Val will be here, as always. Thank you, Val. Oh, Andre says, I miss doing book design. Sad face. I'm sorry you can't do it anymore, Andre. You're just too good of a comic book artist now. He says that I learned at university that the book uh, should always start on the right page and it's called the noble page. Does that sound familiar to you? I didn't know that. The more you know, Andre. <laughs> cool fact. Thanks for sharing. And he also learned how to calculate the margins using the golden square or the golden uh, ratio. Um, that's not something that we really use anymore uh, uh -huh. or like it depends on what kind of project as well yeah. um, so the golden ratio is uh, something that we got from um, nature great uh, maybe I should show you over here yeah please do or it's called the golden number or golden section so I I forget exactly what the story is but this is how you calculate um, the the sizes and the mm -hmm. the relationship of each element. And they used to do it so much uh, at the beginning of, of like uh, book design mm -hmm. and book printing. Uh, they don't really do it that much anymore. Uh, there's another thing which is called the Fibonacci uh, sequence, mm -hmm. uh, which are um, so. For example, if you have the first number is one and the second number is two. The third number will be the first and, and second number um, together. So it'll be three, you know? And then the one after that will be five. Yeah. So um, so they're actually, um, 
like a very specified numbers and you can use those for your uh, hierarchy if you're not sure if something looks a little bit off uh, if you're not sure what what uh, numbers to give your point size for your uh, title versus your body text then you can use the Fibonacci number wow I never knew yeah cool whoa yeah we have people in chat listing all the numbers off <laughs> Yeah, Andre, it was the classic way. Gotcha. The golden ratio. Yeah, so these are the Fibonacci numbers, and they just go forever. Yeah, oh my gosh, those are some big numbers. Man. Chat, you've got nine and a half minutes to get your portfolio sent over. Go, go, go. Kevin says, the three days fly by, or is it just me? You're right, Kevin, these weeks. You can go real fast. And would the back cover count in the contents? Uh, it's totally up to you. In this mm -hmm. case, I'm gonna count it. Cool. And if you very quickly need to change um, the the case of uh, your text then you can go type change case and you can go either any one of these so oh, I want cool. it to be lower case gotcha and I want there to be no hyphenations so I'm gonna go to I think it was paragraph yep and you go to hyphenation and you uncheck the box Cool. And you make sure everything is selected that you want to be included. Mm -hmm. Nice. What's up, Hugo? Thanks for being here. Afroja says, I'm still here for learning. Hopefully you're still learning, Afroja. Lots of good facts are being thrown around. Lots of good stuff to learn. So another thing that usually confuses people is the hyphen, m dash, n dash. Yeah, what is it? Okay, so the hyphen is the shortest one and it goes between uh, two words. And so for example, I don't know, maybe lookalike. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to hyphenate it, you, you use the hyphen. Uh, the n dash is used between numbers. So oh. for example, six to seven or August uh, five to August 15. Uh, any of those you use the n dash, we which we can get from here. Uh, insert special characters, hyphens, and dashes, n dash. Uh, the n dash is used in between sentences. So, for example, if you are done with what you're saying, but you want to add extra information to it, but mm -hmm. you don't want it to really be a run on, so you put an m dash um, between the, those two. Two sentences, mm -hmm. and the m dash is the longest, uh, the longest one. Gotcha. So if you guys were confused, I that. never knew. <laughs> so it's n e n, and then m is for the sentence. Yeah, e m. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, that's not a stupid question at all, Hugo. He's wondering what are the hashtags indicating? So the hidden character. Oh, uh, they indicate uh, what's in between the characters that you can see. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I'm looking here, uh, these dots indicate that there are spaces in between these words. Mm -hmm. You know, if I add a space, then that's a double space. Yep. Uh, this means that the text ends here. Um, if I do this, this means it's a new uh, line. Um, this means it's a soft break. So it's basically showing you the the things that you've done, the commands that you've already done, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you forgot or something, just to double check. Yeah, cool, great, great point. Seems like there's a lot of different symbols. It might take a while to learn them all. If you have any more type-related questions, please feel free to throw them over to us. We won't start our review for a couple minutes, so we got some more time. And then after the review, it'll just be a good time for us to look over all of Alma's work over the, the whole three days um, and then close things out.
let you know how you can stay in touch with Alma after the stream, what her uh, social media is, and then we will close it out for the week until XD tomorrow. Almost done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our timer just turned red. Oh no. It's crunch time. And I'm done. <laughs> you have four minutes and 46 seconds. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so this is like a very um, simple slash weird uh, contents page. Mm -hmm. Because the contents is so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and also because like the design is not, not a regular design. Right. <laughs> you have like, the <laughs> word content. You're like, wait, what? Oh, <laughs> wonder if I could use some cat photos. Or maybe we should just leave it white space. Yeah, I think it's nice mm -hmm. white space. Um, do you want me to show you how to uh, prepare a file for print? Do it. Yes, please. OK. So what you usually do is, um, depending on what kind of printer you're dealing with. For example, for me, I want to print at home. So mm -hmm. I go file, uh, print booklet. Uh, and I go to print settings and I decide which printer I'm using, uh, what, what's the paper size, do I want it centered on the, on the page, mm -hmm. uh, d what kind of marks and bleeds do I want, um, and then um, color management you can uh, change uh, these but this is more for the the printer right uh, some of them suggest like a specific uh, uh, profiles Profile. for you yeah um, and then once you click OK um, you can you can preview it here and um, you can see how and it auto collates it for you yeah it auto collates so now I think I did the wrong number so it's giving me blank pages it added uh, extra blank page. Oh, because I didn't design that page. Oh, right, we still have one more spread. Oh, yeah. Where is it? Mm. <laughs> I can add it here. Boom. Yeah, and I just put pictures. More pictures, more pictures. Because you had to add something divisible by four. Yeah. Got you, got you. Hashi says this, is ex <laughs> this inspires her to do more projects for him. <laughs> no problem, Rasim. Glad to be here. And look at that friend. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Had some some prey. <laughs> some poor stuffed animal. Maybe we want a different uh, thing over here. So yeah. Oh, nice. So we go back to this one, uh, print booklet, and then uh, once we preview it. Um, uh, w they are giving me the warning sign here because my I didn't indicate the paper size. Okay. But the default one that was already there is much smaller than my um, design size. So it's mm -hmm. like, oh, your design is going to go over the page. Mm -hmm. But this is how you see it. And then you print it. And every time a spread comes out, you have to flip the page and put it again so that it uh, prints the other side. Front and back. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, or if you want to send it to a printer, then Command E for export. Oh, okay. And you choose PDF print. And here you, you pick a high quality print. And if you want all pages um, or like a just a range or I think for this one, usually the printer might ask you for to PDF it as single pages so oh. they can play with it uh, as mm -hmm. they as needed right and then here you pick the compression um, this is a really good compression because uh, 300 is like more than enough for the printer yeah we can't see more than that so it won't make a difference if the number is bigger but yeah. it will make a difference in the file size exactly so if the file is too big it might crash mm -hmm. so anything that's bigger than 300 it'll turn it automatically into 300 and then you pick what marks and beads you want. And then you click export and you just send it to the printer. Just a nice little email. Mm -hmm. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, Hugo, good question. When do you package a file? Um, so you package a file if you want to send it to a printer. 
um, or if there's more than one designer working on on the file, but mm -hmm. they might not have uh, the other designer might not have the typefaces that you worked with yep. or the images. Um, so packaging is basically putting everything that's in the InDesign file in a folder mm -hmm. so that once you move it around, there won't be any uh, broken links because what InDesign does is it's basically a platform that links things together. But once you uh, place an image in it, that doesn't mean that the image is in your file. It's just showing up in your file. Yeah, right. It actually exists like in your computer and mm -hmm. it's just being previewed there. Yeah, missing links are no fun. Mm -hmm. Cool, so we went from start to finish, totally starting new to how you would send it to a printer. And we'll close up the project after we do our reviews. But right now we need to go to space so we can look at some portfolios. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Chat, you want to come with us? OK, we'll be back in a moment. the space station. Everybody enjoy their ride. Anybody get sick? Anybody get stuck in cryo sleep? in space. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, space will do that to you. I know that's a good dog, Kevin, for sure. So welcome to the space station. This is where we do our portfolio reviews. You can see on our console behind us, we have Ming Zhang's portfolio. Ming, are you here? Let us know in the chat. We're going to check out some of your projects. But first, I'm going to take my helmet off. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Yay, Meng is here. Thank you so much for submitting your portfolio. I have it open. And Alma, I'm just going to kind of let you uh, critique as you will. But first, Meng is a brand strategist, graphic designer, and illustrator in New York, focusing on graphic design, branding, and editorial design. Been featured a couple times, so that's awesome. And then a little bit of a bio. Pretty cool. Do you want to pick the project? Or? I want you to. What interests you? Can we can we go for the Far East uh, title? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So I'm really glad you have a background. Yeah. Because that's uh, always like really important to know what I'm looking at. Totally, and that's something that we don't always see in these portfolio reviews: some context, some story. And some really nice photography. Yeah, right. So we got credits, we got the year, we got the little story behind the project. Um, Jump into really it. Interesting die cuts on the front mm -hmm. cover. Yeah, check that out. A little detail. That's very cool. And the color is simple but um, strong. Right. And it uses simple but strong photography to mm -hmm. capture it. Yeah, really neat and organized. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone said it's so far east we can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> Too far. <laughs> yeah, the lines are so thin. It kind of has a like a traditional yet modern looking uh, layout, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah. What? How does this typeface feel for readability? Is this a good one? Um, I can't really tell from the picture but mm -hmm. um, sans serif thin I think it might be a little bit too thin okay yeah yeah and um, uh, there are a little bit of rivers uh, mm -hmm. and that's that's a thing that you get when you justify the text right so you're gonna have to like manually go and fix it yeah take some time for sure mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that little bit That's of texture. So nice yeah. <laughs> nice um, detail on yep. the si side. Mm -hmm. Help someone find their way through the book. Ooh. I like these context photos because it doesn't show every single spread, but it shows just kind of like the spirit of the entire project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, really, really nice and strong photography. Yeah. And I really like the cover. It's simple, but 
elegant. Mm -hmm. It does the job. Oh, and you can see the, the cut, the shadow through it. It's really nice that you've taken like all these different pictures to show um, the things, the different elements that you've uh, designed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the, the details mm -hmm. that you would miss if you weren't actually holding this book. And I think it was like a really good decision to only use one color because, because of the content itself. True. It's already like, like texture and like Literally, detail. Literally, yeah. Yeah, so. But it is kind of a pop color. It's like brave and I like it. Yeah. Cool, nice job, Ming. Let's jump into another. Can you see the less so home? Mm-hmm. I like these colors for sure. Mm. They have a kind of a retro feel to them. Yeah, definitely. Alrighty. Global innovator providing building materials and furnishing. Alrighty. Um, I really like that you've like bothered to put all the information at the beginning of each project. Yeah, it's important. And showing like the the different um, processes that you've done. So this looks like it's debossed mm -hmm. and that it has the foil uh, stamp on it. Yeah, and there's even like some texture there. Yeah. It's awesome. Again, nice and simple. Mm -hmm. And there's an emboss over there. Yeah, it's like this is the back of the front cover. Mm. So it debossed through the whole uh, mm -hmm. book. Yep. I think that's a nice, like, consistent uh, detail throughout the book. And I like your use of half sheets. Yeah, I like that. That breaks the monotony of the flow. Mm -hmm. And this use of a full bleed photograph behind it, like, kind of creates a frame. And then once you actually move it, you get to see the entire image. Mm -hmm. Sweet. It's also a nice contrast between, like, text and photograph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some infographic work happening here. Nice, integrating this texture that you have in other places. Um, he's um, really managed to um, make his content very delicate. Yeah. And like balance it out while having a, a nice contrast, which right. is really good. Because you don't think of building materials as being delicate, but this is seems sophisticated. Mm -hmm. It's like scale. a booklet within a booklet. Mm -hmm. But this isn't even grayscale, it's just very desaturated. Yeah. Cool. It's like it gives that pop of color uh, when, when it's in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can already tell that you, you have a style. Uh, you're huh. very like neat and organized. Yeah. Uh, which is, it, it's, it's really good when you are having to lay out like a lot of information. Right, so is there anything that you would change for this? If you notice any even nitpicky things you could help out with? I don't think so, I really like it. I think it's strong. Yeah, and I think it's um, appropriate for the, the, the subject that he's uh, designing for. Yeah. Cool, great job, Ming. Let's look at another one. You pick this time. Okay. <laughs> let's see, let's see. I want this because I think it'll be more, uh, less of a book and maybe more of an entire suite. Black Star Pastry. Mm. It's a simulated client. And it shows what we can expect, cool. So it's a boutique patisserie, black star pastry. And the fairy tale like uh, visuals, inspiring from an antiquated culture. Okay. Really nice illustrations. I wonder if uh, you did them yourself. Yeah, Ming, are these yours? Beautiful. And the gold is like really nice and delicate on top of the blue. Yeah, very, like you said, antiquated and classical. But these are kind of fanciful too. Mm -hmm. So we got strawberry watermelon, yum. Mm -hmm. Chocolate popcorn, okay, I'm down. <laughs> An orange Persian fig. But then we get something more 
um, like more of a tight design here compared to this more illustrative look. Ooh. Nice. These are the napkins, that's a good one, or the wrap. It's a, a really nice identity. Mm -hmm. Really well thought out. Um, one thing I would uh, change is, uh, first of all, the I feel like the design of the letterhead can be pushed a little bit more. Okay. Um, I feel like it's a little bit different from the rest of the um, identity. Yeah. Um, especially the the frame doesn't really go well with um, with the other designs and, and, and illustrations. I feel like it's a little bit too different. Gotcha. Because everything else is like too detailed and delicate and like fancy, and this mm -hmm. one is like a very um, very abstract. Um, yeah. And I would say the same thing about the. The, uh, the wrapper, the, the patterns, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's tough because there are, like, the visual aspects are very detailed, and then the actual, like, text and the frames, it's very clean. So it's hard to, where do we blend them? How can you blend them? Maybe this is where it starts. Like, it's clean, but it's still illustrative. Or maybe you take like um, break down the illustrations into like simple uh, yeah. uh, details and maybe build a, a thing from there. Right. Like I know you noticed or you said that there is the star pattern here because it is black star. But mm -hmm. if you notice in the actual logo, the stars are like literal stars. Yeah. I don't know. Keep in that visual vocabulary altogether. Whoops. So that's something to consider. Yeah. But I mean, it looks great. It's successful. Hi, Hamda. <laughs> hey, Hamda. <laughs> Thanks for joining. We are looking at Ming's portfolio, and it's beautiful. Yeah, someone um, agrees about the border. They, they're saying it looks too thick mm. and overpowers. I think this is an interesting way to solve kind of the issue of illustration versus tight design. It's like, it's constellation-y, it goes with the vibe, but it's still a little bit cleaner. Mm. I would say though is that the space around it is a little bit too small. I would give it a little bit of more mm -hmm. breathing space, like the one on top. Yeah, this feels good. Mm -hmm. But like a really Oops. nice mock-ups as well. Oh yeah, very professional. Oh, and then we got the real food. Mm. Girl, <laughs> girl, <laughs> get some of that. <laughs> um, one thing that I like about projects that actually show the product is when the product is maybe matched with design on itself, like not just repetitive food, 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 or candle, candle, candle. It might be food, and then you show um, just one of the design assets over here. Yeah, I mean, just the fact that he has them on the same background as the, mm -hmm. like, already, like, pushes that consistency. I right. Mean. I want to go to here. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome job, Meng. Your portfolio is super strong. I think all of our call-outs were pretty nitpicky or kit-picky. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for submitting. Really appreciate it. Good luck with everything. I'll give you a follow. All right, on to the next one. We've got Christian Ospina from Colombia. Mm. A self-described <laughs> designer, a graphic design and art direction, and some work experience, which is always Nice to see. So I'm gonna let you pick the first one. Okay, uh, maybe we start with the first one. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so this is a corporate document editorial layout. Perfect for this week. Thank you for bringing back the spiral. Mm -hmm. Like a good spiral. That, that was actually not sarcasm because if you go to um, design school, they don't let you use the spiral. But I've seen a lot of like old uh, projects with like really big designers, you know. Mm -hmm. um, can't think of anyone right now, but they've, they've used it in like such amazing way, especially when you uh, incorporate color to it. Exactly. You can do some really cool stuff with it, yes. you know. And it's like, it's very practical when you're flipping through, especially a thick book. Yep. I agree. And it adds to the actual feel, like you can feel the pages kind of rolling over that spiral. Mm -hmm. Nice. So here's a little bit of info. 
Uh, the photos have the ultimate goal to reveal the aesthetics of the document without giving away any of the vital or private information. Cool. That's helpful to so know. He's even designed like the information. Yeah, totally. His little table of contents. Whoa. Oh, it's really nice that um, you've added uh, some of your process. Totally. So I've, I haven't seen this before, so it's really nice to yeah. see. Yeah, a lot of people will show process just like showing their Photoshop layers being turned on, but they won't actually show Photoshop. So this is cool. You actually see the the tool in which, or in design, in mm -hmm. which you build it. And the grid, which is interesting for like other designers. Yeah. And look at this, using CC libraries over here. What, what? <laughs> what, what? <laughs> Nice. Um, this is a really nice and strong typeface. I wonder what typeface that is. Oh, Christian, you here? Typeface, please. It is really nice. Well, Christian understands uh, the importance of white space. Yeah, sure <laughs> does. <laughs> it's uh, really like nice and and flowy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem sterile, but it seems inten intentional. Christian mm -hmm. says, "Thank you, Adobe." You're welcome, Christian. That was Adobe. He lives inside me. Are you Christian, Christian? <laughs> I'm speaking to you, Christian. <laughs> uh, okay, then we have... Oh, are these... Oh, maybe these are different um, companies that they work with. Cool. Oh, okay, I see. Distribution channels. So this looks kind of like a... Okay. Like a brand identity mm -hmm. kind of look. Yeah. Handbook. Like lots of rules and stuff. Diamond Comics Distributors. Wowza. Showing some more of the frames or the grids. So yeah, I think the design is um, very appropriate for the kind of content that it is because it's it's like trying to show the identity, mm -hmm. uh, but mostly like what the brand is and all their informations and, and rules and stuff. So. It's it's designed and organized nicely, but like not too designed that it takes away from the information. Yeah, I think maybe my main issue, and it's not even really an issue; it's more of just an observation. Is I feel like there's a lot of photographs of similar-ish things, whereas a viewer, like I see that this is the like the heading, and then this is also it again. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I need to see like both this and this, even though they're slightly different. Mm -hmm. And maybe know. when you're putting like uh, four different pictures together, um, maybe think about like the direction in which the picture is going. So for example, this is like, this is going that way, that's going this way. Like uh, each one is going in a different direction mm -hmm. and it's a little bit... Um, it's a little jarring to the eyeballs. But really, really cool. Mm -hmm. You really rocked that project. Let's look at one more. I'm yeah, gonna let you pick. I, I wanna... That one, the, where where the cursor was. Science fiction book. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> it's an idea that occurs in the head that doesn't exist yet. By Ray Bradbury. Yeah, already you love it. Yeah, because it's very brave, you know, not to put anything on the cover. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wait, is this gonna be empty all, all throughout? <laughs> Oh, fiction cinema. Ooh. Nice. More white space. We love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he told us the typeface name. It is... Oh, Montserrat. Gotcha. Okay. Tuck that away. Thanks, Christian. Nice. More white space. Trying to break the traditional way of organizing information. Mm-hmm. Like here, I'm like, do we really need a close-up and mm, that? Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe it's just because I can't read the language, so I can't relate to it as well. You can see the grain of the paper. Mm. This is nice. Yeah. What is this, though? <laughs> Christian, can you tell us more about this project? Oh, I see. Yeah, it's like a little overlay. That's really interesting. There's Mr. Bradbury. 
I feel like the the content of this book is so interesting that maybe the design can be pushed a little bit more because um, what what I saw after the the abstract uh, spread, I feel like the typography became a little bit more traditional, mm -hmm. uh, especially with I don't know is this pink or red? I think it's red. It's not here. It's red, but when with the spreads, it's looking a little bit pink. So yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like the the pink or purple is a little bit um, wouldn't be my choice of color for this content mm -hmm. because it's a little bit like soft and like cute and friendly when mm -hmm. you're talking about like science fiction, you know, something that blows the mind. Yeah. Um, so I, I would I would probably go for a different color. I, I would also go for a different typeface. Um, okay. This typeface looks a little bit more corporate-y. It does, yeah. Pretty corporate, but clean. And here's all the colors that was used. So there's that pink. Mm. Uh, I see. I think he's talking about the the colors that are being used in, in those movies. Oh, cool. I see the signature color. There's the pink again. Oh, this is interesting. This is different. Yeah, so I feel like there's a little bit of inconsistency with the design here because mm -hmm. some some layouts are like uh, really cool and interesting and like breaking the um, tradition, but others are like mm, too expected. Right. So like, see here, your play with the with the cutouts uh, along with the line and the typography mm -hmm. is like really uh, nice and playful. Yeah, it seems like each section has its own style, but they vary. Mm -hmm. Like, even <laughs> here as well, like to have a, a booklet within the book um, is a very um, like nice way to break, especially the way it is on the paper. You're mm -hmm. like, what is is this like a? Yeah, can I pick this up? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, he did it! <laughs> this is super interesting, Christian. I'm gonna exit out so I can just scroll down. Because there's a lot. And I get it because it's your thesis project, so of course there's gonna be a lot. We've gotta document this well. There's a lot of like uh, oh, there. interesting um, like movements here yeah. and there. Movements, that's a great way to talk about it. Christian, you have a really cool style. Uh, keep up the awesome work. Love seeing your work for Mad Cave Studios. And thank you all for submitting your portfolios. I'm sorry if we didn't get to see yours. Make sure you come back for another week that um, participates in your field of study. So if you're XD, you could submit your portfolios next week. But uh, Alma, maybe we can talk super quickly because we only have like three minutes about your project. And then we'll close it out and let people how, know how they can contact you sure. in the future. And Christian, I'm gonna follow you. Followed. Um, so just reintroduce what we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's walk through it. Okay, so um, I created a magazine. I think now it's 28 pages. Yeah, 28 mm -hmm. pages uh, about cats, uh, some random information, as well as like history of cats, why we love cat um, pictures and videos. Mm -hmm. um, called it Copycat Issue 1, <laughs> 2018. Hashtag. <laughs> Uh, yeah, hashtag. And uh, this, I treated it as an end sheet, even though it was a self cover. So I just put a couple of images uh, with a contents page. And then the first article, uh, why cool cats rule the internet. Mm -hmm. The text wrap. Uh, yeah, uh, cats and paintings, um, nice breaker. Uh, what, what cats would say if they were, if they could talk. Um, a very tiny uh, article, <laughs> breaking article with like some nice imagery. Mystical. <laughs> um, some images again, because you can't do a cat zine without like using all these images. All of them. Uh, and uh, interesting and funny facts uh, about cats that you didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, more breaking and puns. With the scroll bar at the bottom. Yeah, with the scroll built. bar at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, this bar ended up on this side, which <laughs> it shouldn't, but... How'd you get over there? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's like, no, go back to where you belong. Uh, but yeah. Um, and then um, another article, and closing in with uh, 
another end sheet mm -hmm. with the black, actually this is supposed to be a black scroll bar. Um, we can do it. Let's do it. Change it on the fly. Hurry up. <laughs> and we end the, the zine with the history of cats so that like, as soon as you grab the zine, you just flip it on the, uh, on the back and yeah. you have the introduction there. Wow, you got a lot done <laughs> in three days, an entire publication. Everyone is saying, Alma did a great job. They're so excited that you were here, definitely coming back. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Thank you, Alma, for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yay, so if you wanna follow Alma, it is alma-k at behance.net. That is the um, screen name, so go check that out. And we will be back tomorrow for some XD with Talon, and then next week, Tuesday through Thursday, more XD goodness. So have an awesome weekend. Check out the replays if you missed any. And Alma and I are out. See ya. See ya.